Trump moments ago for his first interview since his third indictment. You will not believe the directions we went and the news he broke. Everything from his decision about appearing at the GOP debate. That's right. He's made his decision and whether he will sign the pledge supporting other candidates for president and what he really thinks about Jack Smith, Fonnie Willis, Bill Barr and Chris Christie. And wait until you hear what he has to say about Joe Biden's state of mind. Here's the president from Bedminster moments ago. Mr. President, thank you for sitting down with us, spending some time with us. Uh, a very busy schedule. You've been killing it. You've been doing extremely well. The poll numbers are, are off the charts. You got some new polling. Tell us about it. Well, I guess we're up by 45 and 50 points now, and it's a great honor. People see what's happening with our country. They see how badly it's doing. I think they're trying to really to contrast that to four really incredible years. We rebuilt our military. We got the largest tax cuts in history, the largest regulation cuts in history. We did so much, uh, and we had such success. We were respected around the world. You know that better than anybody. We were respected by China and by Russia and by everybody. You wouldn't have had Ukraine and Russia. You wouldn't have had Taiwan and China. Uh, you wouldn't, which could very well happen, by the way. And uh, we were doing very well as a country, and then all of a sudden uh, we have this group of people running it, and they're incompetent. And this Joe Biden is just an incompetent man, and he's crooked as you can be. Go crooked. We really do. We call him crooked Joe now because uh, what they've done with the election uh, to be uh, to weaponize a DOJ and an FBI like he's done. People have thought about it for probably 100 years, and they do it in third world countries, but they never did it here, uh, where you have three and four indictments. You never had an indictment in your whole life, and now you have three or four in a period of a month. It's all because of the election. They could have done it two and a half years ago, by the way, if they really wanted to. But they never thought it was going to be necessary. But we're leading him by a lot, too. We're leading not only the Republicans by, uh, I guess, 50 and 52 points. That's a lot. But we're leading Biden by a lot. And uh, they've weaponized everything. They, uh, it's called election interference. And I don't think they're getting away with the game, because since they've done this, our poll numbers have gone up. The people of this country know it, but we have a crooked guy, we have an incompetent man. I would have never said that, but when they did that, then you sort of say, let's take the gloves off. Uh, what they're doing to this country at the border, what they're doing to our country with taxes, they're using the environment to just destroy people. I mean, the, the windmills are absolutely the most expensive form of energy you can have. We have liquid gold right under our feet. We would have made, we were making a fortune. And then he turned that off, and uh, it's an environmental nightmare. There's some news that came out today. James Comer, the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, released some documents that showed that the Biden family received tens of millions of dollars from countries like Kazakhstan and, and Ukraine and, and others. One of the subtexts was there was a, a transfer of money, $142,300 that went from one of these foreign oligarchs right into the Devin Archer and Hunter Biden company, which they turned around the very next day and purchased a sports car, same dollar amount. Yeah, They're doing this type of thing and you're answering indictments and, and arraignments. Well, it's incredible. I mean, it really is incredible. And and I'm answering them not for that. I'm answering because I question an election. Not only question, I, I totally dispute that election. I think it's ridiculous what happened and that they allowed that to happen and that the media doesn't want anybody to talk about it. But now we can. And we did something uh, yesterday. You know, now that we have the subpoena power, because we now have subpoena power, all of a sudden the J6 committee, the unselects, I call them, everything was deleted and destroyed. The documents, everything was deleted and destroyed. Uh, that's a criminal act. So all of that stuff, all of that nonsense you watch for a year and a half go on with all Democrats and two so-called Republicans, but they were worse than any of the Democrats, Kinzinger and Cheney, uh, it's all been deleted and gotten rid of. They deleted it because they didn't want anybody to see it, because the real answers were there, but they didn't want to report it. Uh, that's incredible. And when you talk about Russia and you talk about money coming in, during one of the debates, if you remember, the second debate, uh, I said, what about the mayor of what, Moscow's wife? Three and a half million dollars. And Chris Wallace was like fighting me. You shouldn't that. ask that. You shouldn't. And nobody's mentioning that, but that was a major 
bone of contention because I was saying to Chris Wallace, he got three and a half million dollars, and I believe it was him, indirectly or directly, and I was debating Joe Biden, not Hunter Biden. I got three and a half million. I said, what about the three and a half million from the mayor of Moscow's wife that was given to you? And Chris Wallace, really? I said, who am I debating? Am I debating him or am I debating you? You bring up a good point. Uh, the next topic I want to talk about, the, the, the debate. Chris Wallace was at Fox. He, he stopped that debate down and fact-checked you, and he was wrong. He was so wrong. Which begs the question, August 23rd, Fox debate. You said in the past, you said, I'd be stupid to go to the debate because I'm winning. Someone else referred, uh, used the comment like, why eat when you're not hungry? You're not going to that debate, are you? So I'll let it be known next week. But look, I'm leading by 50 and 55 points over to Sanctimonious. Uh, the, the nice part is I'm leading by a lot over Biden. Nobody's ever led by so much over somebody. We just have to make sure they don't cheat on the elections, because that's the question I get more. Sir, will they do it again? Will they cheat again? We're not going to let them. We can't let them, because that election will be the most important election in the history of our country, because our country's going to hell. You look at our borders. We're being invaded at our borders. Uh, prisons are being emptied out into our country, and mental institutions, insane asylums, it's a stronger word. But or, or words, because he would say word, it's words, but insane asylums being emptied out into our country, terrorists are pouring into our country. They're catching a lot, but the ones that are really bad and really smart, they're getting through, and we have no idea where they are and who they are, where they come from. Our country is in serious trouble. We are at a level where I don't think we've ever been like this. I think it started with the election, but I think it also, a uh, big part of it was Afghanistan. When we, when they saw how incompetent we handled that, when we left, when we took out the soldiers first, and I was all set, we were gonna leave with dignity and strength. I dealt with the head of the Taliban, Taliban, and it, the press went crazy. How would you call him? I call him because that's the one that was making the decisions. Uh, as they said to Jesse James, you remember Jesse James, the bank robber, why do you only rob banks? I rob banks because that's where the money is. So I spoke to the head of the Taliban, and we uh, had a very good understanding. For 18 months, not one American soldier was even shot at, and he knew not to do it. And then this guy takes over, and he moves the military out first, leaving 13 dead soldiers, 36 horrifically wounded, many other people dead. You know, people don't talk about that, but many, many people dead. And all of this for nothing. And what else did we leave behind? $85 billion worth of equipment. Billion, not million, $85 billion worth of the best military equipment in the world, because I rebuilt the military, so I bought most of that equipment. They gave a lot of it to to the Taliban, to Afghanistan. So uh, I don't think we've ever had a country in worse shape. One thing very important, today it's nuclear. It's not army tanks going back and forth. And we have a man that can't put two sentences together, that have no, he has no idea what's going on with Russia, with China, with Pakistan, with India, with Iran. I had Iran. They were going to make a deal within one week after the election. They would have had a deal and there would have been no nuclear weapons. Now they're very close to having a nuclear weapon. And we have a man who's grossly incompetent as our president, and he has no idea. You take a look at what's happened to us worldwide. Uh, Saudi Arabia has left us, essentially. Uh, Iran is a disaster. Iran is a, we would have had Iran. It, it was going to be very good for everybody. There would have been new, no nuclear weapons. But China's trying to take over the world, and they're doing it. They're in Cuba now. They're taking over, essentially, quietly, militarily, they're taking over Cuba, but they're taking over South America. They're taking over the Panama Canal. How about the Panama Canal? We lost 36,000 lives, the Mosquito. We lost 36,000 lives building the Panama Canal. It was stupidly sold for $1 to Panama, okay? How about that one? It was done by, during the Carter administration, it was sold for $1, and now China is taking it over. But they have President Xi of China no respect for this country anymore. They have no respect. We're like a laughing stock because we have an incompetent president. We have so much. You just opened up so many avenues right now. But just to clean up, tie up the the, the Fox debate, you said you'll you'll decide next week. What is I'll there? I'll be anything? announcing. Yeah, I've already decided, uh, and I'll be announcing something next week. Because yes. I noticed the Fox senior executives came and had dinner with you and pitched you. Did they move the needle? 
Well, they were very nice. Look, they were very nice. Here, here's why, uh, Mr. President. The only reason I, I say this, I put a poll up on Twitter. At least two thirds of the people don't want you to do the debate because mm -hmm. they feel it could be a setup. Are you concerned about Fox setting well, up? Well, when you're at 75, 78, 80 percent, and other guys are at zero. 1%, 2%, 3%, you do say, uh, what's the upside? Am I going to go up one point? But they could go up. You know, they're not dumb people. They're senators. They're governors. They're intelligent people. You have some very good people. I think you have some very good people, and you have some people. I mean, I have a problem with the debate for another reason. I wouldn't sign the pledge. Why would I sign a pledge? There are people on there that I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have certain people as, you know, well, somebody that I'd endorse. So they want you to sign a pledge. But I can name three or four people that I wouldn't support for president. So right there, there's a problem, okay? Right there, there's a problem. I but I don't have that, to use that. Right now, no, I don't saying, want to do that. Which, I don't want three? to do that. There's no reason to insult them. Uh -huh. But there are some people there that a lot of people wouldn't endorse, but they wouldn't be right. They're not going to go anywhere, by the way. They're not going to get it. But so I wouldn't endorse So the RNC them. said that's one of the requirements for, yeah. so you won't sign it. Well, they have three or four people that I wouldn't, you know, who would put these people as president? If you ever put these people as president? But you'll get somebody else. There'll be somebody. But right now, I saw Christy Noem, uh, who's terrific. She's done a fantastic job. I watched her this morning. She was on television. They asked her, are you going to run? Because there are other people running. Are you going to run? She said, no. Why aren't you going to run? Because nobody can beat Trump. She said it, which I greatly respect. I mean, she's saying, I hope the truth. She said, why would I run? Nobody's going to beat Trump. There's not even a contest. These people are just wasting their time. Somebody like uh, Asa Hutchinson, who's polling at zero, will ask me nasty questions. Uh, somebody like Chris Christie is polling at 1%, and he's going to ask me nasty questions, and others, too. And then you have some that are very good. I mean, Tim Scott has been very nice, and uh, Ramishwamy has been very, very nice. I mean, these are, you know, very capable people, very good people. But uh, why would you do that when you're leading by so much? Ronald Reagan didn't do it. Nixon didn't do it. Many people didn't do it. And uh, but I'm going to look at it very seriously. I'd like to do it. I've actually gotten very good marks on debating talents. But uh, you want to be, you know, they want a smart president. They want somebody that's going to be smart. So we have to do the smart thing. Yeah, I think I would agree with you that why would you do it? Uh, Christie and Pence both said you may not have the guts to come onto the debate. I well, that's what people will say. They'll say, oh, he doesn't have the guts. He doesn't have the guts. I mean, uh, I did see an in town hall. That was about as hostile as you can do. I hear I did very well because, you know, I did so well that they fired the head of CNN over there today. <laughs> but uh, no, it's not a question of guts. It's a question of intelligence. And I'm going to make a decision. I haven't, you know, totally ruled it out. I, I, I would love to do it in many ways because I sort of enjoy that. But we'll uh, let people know next week. Fannie Willis. Fannie Willis, the prosecutor in Georgia. They are setting up barricades outside the, the Georgia. Terrible, they're, terrible, they're, terrible. They're in preparation, obviously, I would assume, for an indictment. What are your thoughts of her? Because there's some discussion that she may have some questionable background. I, you know, there's some... her. Father may or may not have been in Black Panther. I think that was discussed. She's had perhaps incorrect relationships with some of the people, some of the gang members that she's also prosecuting right now. Can she give you a fair shake? No, of course not. Look, I don't think the people of Georgia, where I did very well, and I won it the first time, and I won it, I think, by much more the second time. I can say that about the whole election, too. I don't think they'd stand for it. Uh, this woman is not a capable woman. She's a woman that has, uh, I mean, and maybe she'll change her mind. And I don't know what she's doing. I really don't know. All I know is she could have done it two and a half years ago if she was going to do something. And this is about a perfect phone call, a call where I'm questioning the election. I'm telling them that, in my opinion, the election was rigged. And they're saying that I was, I did something incorrect. I didn't do anything wrong. I believe I won that election by many, many votes, many, many hundreds of thousands of votes. That's what I think. And I expressed that on the phone call. And I said, I don't know what the number was, like 11,000 or something. I said, what I need is 11,000 votes. I won this thing by hundreds of thousands of votes. That's my opinion. And it's a strong opinion. And I think it's borne out by the facts. And we'll see that. But uh, she wants to 
do something on a perfect phone call. This call, I say, was more perfect than my call with Ukraine, which turned out to be a hell of a lot better than people even thought, because I was right about Ukraine. When I said you should look into and take a look at Biden, I called to congratulate Zelensky, nice guy. I call and I get along great with him. I get along great with Putin. And frankly, I'll have a, something worked out within literally 24 hours. I will get them to the table fast and we'll get it worked out because people are dying at levels that nobody's ever seen. But when you look at that phone call, that original phone call with Ukraine, I was so right about that. And I said, what's going on with Hunter Biden? It turns out he worked for Burisma took in all of this tremendous amounts of money, and then the laptop from hell was discovered. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people, the first thing they said is, wow, Trump got impeached for nothing. He was right. Actually, he got impeached, and he was 100 percent right. But uh, you need people with courage. You know, Bill Barr was a coward. He was afraid to do things. He was afraid he was going to be impeached. And I was very rough on him, I will say. I said, you have to do something. You know, you have, you're an American. You have to do something, Bill. And he just was a coward. He was afraid to do anything. We need people of stature. We need people that are brave. We need people that are patriots. We don't need cowards because we're fighting a radical left fringe in this country. And I say it, you know, we have dangers from within and from without. But the dangers from within are more dangerous because, you know, the dangers from without, outside, China, Russia, etc., I can handle them. But these maniacs, these lunatics that we have in this country that go from one scam to another, Russia, 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 the Mueller hoax, you look at the Mueller report, after two and a half years, they found no collusion, no collusion with Russia. Uh, you look at the fake dossier, the Steele dossier, fake, where the FBI gave him, offered him a million dollars if, they, if he could support his own writings, that he couldn't do it. A total fake deal. They're all fake stories. You look at the FISA reports. Look at the 51, just to bring it up today, the 51 uh, intelligence agents that said that the Hunter Biden laptop from hell was from Russia, okay? And it turned out to be false, and they knew it. You look at the Twitter and the FBI working together. You look at the DOJ and Facebook working together. Uh, you look at 2,000 mules. Look at 2,000 mules. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of tapes of people stuffing the ballot box. And this slob, uh, Bill Barr is a slob. He's a coward. He didn't do anything. He couldn't do anything. He wouldn't do anything about it. And it's a shame. Uh, and that was a mistake. You know, I had some great people, really great people, but I had some that aren't so good. And Bill Barr was one of them. Bolton was an idiot. But Bolton was good for me because everyone thought he was crazy. So every time I walked into a negotiation with a foreign country, they thought I was going to blow them up. I was going to go to war because he's a maniac. And I was able to make great deals with these foreign countries. So that was OK. But uh, I, real, I, know, I know the people. I know the best ones. And I know the worst. I know the brave, the smart, the dumb. I know them all. So brings me to the next question, uh, Jack Smith. Yeah. Biden gets Merrick Garland to get Jack Smith to do these investigations of you. Deranged. He's like a deranged human being. We'll I watch this guy. Talk, yeah, what's his motivation? What's I think I think he's just a sick guy. Uh, he destroyed the lives of many people. He was overturned unanimously in the Supreme Court. I believe he's 0 and 5. In other words, he takes it to the end. He was involved with the IRS scandal, the big Lois Lerner IRS. That was him. That was his baby, mm -hmm. where the government had to end up paying money, damages, and apologies all over the place, where they went after Christians and they went after incredible people. Jack Smith, uh, he's like a he's like a deranged individual, and I think we're doing very well with that guy. But he is uh, he's a sick puppy. And you know, you look at the boxes. I come under the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to do everything that you see. Biden didn't. Biden's got 1,850 boxes. He's got boxes in Chinatown. Now, here's a guy getting money from China, and he's got boxes in Chinatown. That's big stuff. He's got boxes at Penn, totally unsecured, and he's got boxes under his Corvette, right behind his Corvette, sitting on a wet garage floor, classified documents. I never hear anything about that. It's a rigged system. It's a corrupt country. We're living in a very corrupt country, and I've exposed it. I fired Comey. That was a big thing when I fired Comey. I got rid of a lot of other people, too. And I was really knocking the hell out of the deep state. And then COVID came along. A gift from China, the China virus, came along. 
And we did an incredible job in rebuilding. And by the time we handed over, we had the stock market at a higher point, higher point than it was just prior to COVID coming in, which was like a miracle what happened. And then you had all that we call them the returning jobs, the returning jobs, the returning Trump jobs. They all started returning. And uh, we did a great job with that. But uh, the deep state is something we have to fight very strong in so, this country. I talk to a lot of people. People will come up to me, even the independents, liberals, and say, I'm not sure I like Trump, but I love the fact that when he gets back in there, he's going to clean house. Oh, uh, like, you, like you wouldn't believe. Where do you start? Who's first? Well, and where do you go? I mean, it's sort of an easy question. The first thing I'm doing is we're going to have great border security. We're going to put Tom Homan and, and the guys. Brandon Judd's fantastic. As you know, you've interviewed him many times, and he's great. We have great people on the border. They want to do the job. It's incredible, actually, that they want to do it so much. They, they cry when they see what's happening. Our country is being in invaded. But we're going to strengthen up the border. We're going to drill, baby, drill. I say it. We're going to drill. We're going to get the energy prices way, 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 okay. way down. You famously dropped tomahawks on Syria with President Xi at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was an amazing moment. Why is Biden so afraid of China? What's going on with the Bidens and the Chinese that, that I heard today that Jennifer Granholm actually contacted the CCP when they were about to release oil from the SPR and also maybe have sold some of the S Strategic Petroleum Reserve to a Chinese company that may have a link to Hunter Biden. What is with By this By the connection? way, the reserve which I helped fill up, and now it's at the lowest point in history. Right. We have almost nothing. You know, that was meant for wars and military, not to reduce the gasoline prices for an election, which is what they did. And now it's almost empty. And I had it full. We were full. And I was buying it cheap, too, really cheap. And Congress was fighting me. The Democrats basically were fighting. Uh, I believe we have a compromised president. I believe he is so petrified of China because they know how much money has been given to him. And they know where it is. And I tell you, Jamie Comer's done an incredible job. Jim Jordan, they've done an incredible job. But they found, as of today, I think $32 million that went into his accounts and the various accounts of the family. That's a tremendous amount of money. And nothing was done for it. It was just a bribe. It's just a bribe extortion and a bribe. When you see him talking about the billion dollars for the prosecutor, I'm amazed nothing was ever done. You know, you talk about quid pro quo. That was quid pro quo. Um, but I believe that China has paid them a lot more than that. You look at University of Pennsylvania, you take a look at what's going on over there where China pays millions and millions of dollars at Biden Center, and I guess they pay him a million dollars a year. Or I think they have $999,000 a year. That way you don't have to maybe report because it's under a million. Uh, but I believe we have a compromised person as president. I believe that China has paid him a fortune. I've never seen anybody so weak on China. China is eating our lunch. They're taking over. Cuba, they're taking over South America, they're taking over everything. This all happened over the last three years. China and Russia, now all of a sudden doing military exercises yeah, yeah. in the Aleutian Islands near yeah, Alaska. Right, that's right. That's it's very uh, dangerous. Unthinkable. For us. So that just, we heard about that two days ago, would have never happened if I were president. That would have never happened. I would have called each one, I said, stop, it's not going to happen. And they would have listened to me 100%. So, uh, it's very sad. I think it's the weakest our country has ever been. And I do think we have a Manchurian candidate. This is a president who's a Manchurian candidate. This is a president who's fully compromised. He's so afraid of China. And the reason he's afraid is because I believe they paid him a tremendous amount of money. And he doesn't want people to find out about it. President, um, the House has said Marjorie Taylor Greene and others, Lauren Boebert, I believe, have said it's time to impeach Biden, impeach the president. They can't get full support of the full GOP. They can't lose six votes, and they don't believe they have it right now. Kevin McCarthy said we're going to do an inquiry into impeaching President Biden. Is it time, given what we now know from Comer today, with another $20 million going into the Biden coffers and all the, the Biden Corvettes and whatnot with their money, with Kazakhstan? Is it time the GOP gets behind these two who are calling for the impeachment? Well, the reason, there are two reasons, Ray, but one of the reasons they go after me is because uh, the Republicans are going after them. And going after them very, very powerfully, 
But something has to happen. I mean, it's just, it's, it's massive theft. It's, uh, it's extortion. It's, nobody's ever seen anything like it. This is the most corrupt human being. This is the most corrupt family. For, for these things to be happening is not even believable. And I heard a couple of Republicans, nice people, and they said, well, we have other things to worry about. We have to do this. We have to do that. What could be more important than this? The other reason they go after me is because I'm leading in the election, because they would have done this two and a half years ago. You know, they're very late. You don't do this in the middle of the campaign. Nobody ever said, nobody ever thought it was possible. In fact, it's like, it's taboo. You don't do this during a campaign. They did all this stuff. And they're the ones that control Georgia, by the way. And they're the ones that control New York, the Manhattan DA. I got indicted for no crime. There's not even a crime. Everyone's talking about it. even though even the Democrats say don't do this. This is crazy and the DA didn't want to do it for two years All of a sudden they got forced to do it uh, They put their people into the DA's office. So this is all being led by the DOJ uh, Fannie Willis isn't doing that the DA's the, the whole thing the DOJ is Leading so much because what they want is they want to interfere with the election So that's one and the other thing if you take a look at it uh, they don't want, well, they don't want to run against Donald Trump. So okay. let me ask you, there, there are two competing theories on this, right? One of them is they have some internal polling that they think Biden has a better chance of beating Donald it, Trump. It's not right? internal polling. Look, they don't have internal polling. They're all disinformation, misinformation. Or is it the, the only Trump one they don't want to run against is Donald Trump. I or, beat Hillary Clinton. Or are they, do they not see that you're polling, and now you're polling above Biden? Yes. And they, is, it, is it, maybe they just, they see it they better just than you can't do. help themselves. They take it and they go the opposite. They say the opposite. They don't want to run against me, so they say, we want to run against Trump. And then the stupid fake news, or not fake news, they get along with it. Oh, they really want to run against, they don't want to. If they wanted to run against me, they wouldn't have me being indicted every single day, every time my airplane flies over a, a blue state. Uh, they don't want to run against me. Remember a person named Hillary Clinton? They said the same thing. Oh, we most want to run against, you know, it's very interesting. They made that statement. Oh, we want to run against Donald Trump. And then Bill Clinton, who's a professional, he's a pro, like him or not, he said, the one you don't want to run against is Donald Trump. And he said it very loud and clear, and it turned out that he was right. He also said I was going to win Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. He predicted this before, and he told his wife, you're not doing the right thing. And just like they said that, they didn't believe it, but like they said that, now they said, oh, well, we want to really run against DeSantis is a failed candidate. If I didn't endorse DeSantis, he wouldn't have ever won. He was at, you know, he was out. Then I endorsed him, and he went up, and he was able to win. He went up massively in one night after I endorsed him. But he was a failed candidate. And you know what? He's a failed candidate again. He's got no personality. He's got nothing going. And he's, he's dropped like a rock. I don't even think he's going to be too number along. I mean, somebody's going to come along like maybe Tim Scott or somebody and probably take his place. And probably this stops him in 28. You know, he could have walked into 28, maybe. You still have to campaign. You don't walk into anything. This is a tough world in politics. This is a nasty, nasty world, as we found out. Uh, probably it's never been nastier than it is right now because we have sick people. We have sick people in office. And again, they are a bigger problem than the outside world because the outside world, you can, for the most part, you can uh, cajole, reason with, they need things that we have. You can do things with them, but these people that we have, these radical fascists and Marxists that we have in our government, you can't talk to them. They're nuts. They're crazy. President Obama visited Joe Biden a couple of weeks ago and said, be wary of Donald Trump. You guys are taking it too, too lightly, taking him too lightly. What are your thoughts on Obama? Well, he's not taking it too lightly. He indicted me three or four times. I haven't checked. I'm, by the time I walk out, they'll probably indict me. <laughs> Indicting, when I went to the Great Wharton School of Finance, we didn't have a course on indictments and, you know, all of the things that go with the indictment stuff. Uh, no, he's not taking it not seriously. Uh, he's probably taking it more seriously than any candidate in history because he has the Justice Department that he said he was going to do. If you look back two years, he made a statement that we will stop Donald Trump that he was constitutionally, he doesn't even know what the Constitution is. The guy can't put together two sentences. He can't talk. Every time I watch him talk, it's almost like he's walking on eggs. You, you wonder, is he going to get through the sentence? We have a totally, grossly incompetent man who was incompetent 20 years ago, by the way. He was never the smartest. You know, Ted Kennedy, you heard the story. 
Ted Kennedy was a friend of mine because of Palm Beach. I did him a very big favor. And I said, who is the smartest senator? He told me. I won't tell you because I don't like the guy. <laughs> but I said, who's the smartest senator? He gave me a name. He said, who's your dumbest senator? This is 25 years ago. Who's your dumbest? He says, probably Joe. I said, Joe who? Joe Biden. I mean, this was never a genius 25 years ago. But now he's grossly incompetent. And the sad part of the dangerous part is that we are on the cusp of possible World War III. And this will not be army tanks shooting at each other. These are nuclear weapons, a level of weaponry that the world has never seen before. And we have a man that uh, is incompetent. He has no idea. You take a look at what he's done. Take a look at the money standard. Take a look at all these countries that are going off the dollar. They're being forced off the dollar. I mean, Saudi Arabia is, he goes to Saudi Arabia and he gives the king or the crown prince, who will be the king, but probably I heard gave the king also, a fist bump. What is a fist bump? A fist bump is don't shake my hand because your hands are dirty, I don't want to shake your hand. And they were very insulted by that. But Saudi Arabia now is very much in the arms of China and many countries. But you look at what's happening in South America and you look at what's happening in Cuba. So Cubans, I'm at 95% with Cuba. I don't know who the 5% are, but they want to go back and they want to see their country. They want to see their parents. They want to see their sisters and brothers. China is taking over Cuba and nobody talks about it. The biggest shame of everything is that the fake news doesn't write about it. I don't see any stories about China building military installations in Cuba. That's scary. Final question, Mr. President. Um, Melania Trump, she was a huge part of your, your first she was a great first lady. Yeah, Wonderful she was. Lady. Very popular, too. Is she up for it? Is she ready for another four years as first lady? Well, she really is. And she, you know, it's very interesting. I was talking to her the other day, and she said, it's so sad what's happening to our country. She just said it just so uh, poignantly, but really so it was sad, and yet it was, it expressed it. She said, it's so sad what's happening. She looks at the news and you see the border. Now, actually, for the most part, the news, you know, the fake news doesn't report it. You report it incredibly. You report it for you. It's like one of your biggest subjects because our country is being poisoned by people that are coming in that shouldn't be here. But she looked at it and it was that, it was interest rates, it was the housing market, it was so many different things all. And she said, it's so sad what's happening to our country. No, she's 100%. And uh, I think you've been seeing reports lately that uh, she feels very strongly about it, not because she wants to do it. She had a very nice life before, I'll tell you. She, uh, she thinks it's very important. She thinks our country is uh, being destroyed. Well, we thank you. The American people thank you. I thank you, Newsmax. Thank you. And great job. Great success. You're doing a fantastic job. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Much. President. Thank you. All right, folks, now just a note, Newsmax has accepted the election results as legal and final. Joining me now is former White House advisor for the Trump administration, the host of America First, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, also here CPAC chairman and author of The Desecrators, Matt Schlapp. Seb, really, uh, I go out to Bedminster. We had a long time with the president. I, I, my, my takeaway, uh, I'm interested in you, the man is very confident about earning the nomination. He seems to be focusing on Joe Biden now. What are your thoughts? What's your takeaway? Well, first thing, congratulations, Eric, and uh, congratulations on your fortitude on trying to get you to an answer on the first debate. Um, I'm completely torn myself. I want him to debate 100 times because it's just so hilarious. In 2016, it was hilarious, him slapping down all the rhinos. But you, you don't get on stage with, with losers and clowns like Chris Christie. So, you know, I, I can get his logic, and, and it's a sad logic. But, yeah, I, I think the important thing about, about that interview, and, and you covered the waterfront from the debates to national security to Melania, is um, this is a, a slightly different President Trump. This is, this is a president who's ready to be president again. Mm -hmm. And even when you're talking about the light staff and the personal staff, the heavy tone is here when he talks about what really matters, the, the state of the average American's 
you know, pocketbook, the state of the economy, and, and most seriously of all, national security, that, you know, we, we have this dotard in the White House that Ted Kennedy called the dumbest person he'd ever met, and we might be on the cusp of nuclear war. So we need that fortitude back in the White House, and um, President Trump is ready, and we just need to get him there. Yeah, Matt, what about that? Sebastian's right. It, it took, I think, two, maybe a third question about, about the debate. And he yeah. said, I've decided. Well, I don't think we've heard that before. He said, I have decided, and I will let you know next week. I couldn't get the decision out of him, but he has decided a lot of people, most of the people that I talk to say don't do it because they're fans of his. They don't want to see, number one, maybe a skewed moderator leaning, put his thumb or his or her thumb or both on the scale against Trump. And the, the other was that Christie and them taking pot shots at him. Should he debate? And also, he unequivocally say, said, I'm not signing that pledge. Now, I think the GLP said that's one of the requirements to make that stage. What are your thoughts? Yeah, and there's plenty of other people who are all bragging about qualifying being on that stage who haven't signed that uh, unity pledge either that they'll support the eventual nominee. And my public uh, uh, advocacy for the president is to skip it. I don't think he should be doing the bidding of the RNC or of Fox News. I think he ought to be his own man. And I love the fact that he sat down with you, Eric, and with Newsmax. And there's so much power. The news media is changing so much. Fox meant everything to a Republican candidate who was running previously. But what's interesting is I remember 2016, and you guys were there too. We watched a lot of CNN at those Trump events uh, across the country, and uh, we're at a, an inflection point again. And I, what I, my biggest takeaway from the interview was that when he ran in 16, you can't really know what the pro, what being president's like. You can't really know what all that pressure's like. He knows exactly because he's going to have more pressure than any person who became president because they're trying to put him in prison. And he is so clear-minded and cogent. He doesn't slip up on anything because he is so focused on the fact that he has to do this to save the country and he has a short time to get it done. And I love that laser focus. And, and Sebastian, he, you know, he really didn't hold back. I mean, he's got, he's got a federal indictment with, with, uh, with Jack Smith. He called him deranged. He, you know, he, he had some words about, uh, Fonnie Willis in Georgia as well, he, he is on a roll. I mean, that, that, is, that is a man in the zone. Look, you and I, if I remember correctly, we were at Mar-a-Lago in November when he announced his re-election campaign launch. And, and you know me, uh, I'm a former deputy to the president. I served in the White House. And even for me, standing there, the, the room was standing room only. I got a gut punch halfway through the speech because I realized, oh, my dear Lord, he, he's doing it again. After what they put him through, what they put his wife, his children through, the first Mueller investigation, impeachment one, impeachment two, and then he wants to do it again. Not only that, you know what was really surprising when he announced I, I thought Melania would be, you know, hiding upstairs, crying, saying, oh, my gosh, he's putting us in that lion's den of creeps and, and, and political murderers again. At the end, what did he do? He called Melania up onto the stage. There was a standing ovation, and she had the broadest smile, the grin you've ever seen. He's, she's standing right by her man. Why? Because she knows why he's doing it. He lost a billion dollars. He was slandered for four years. They tried to put him in prison. And he's going to do it again. Why? Because he loves America. You nailed it. This man is determined to finish the job he started and wasn't allowed to finish. Whatever you think of 2020, he needs to finish that job. And he, he is single-minded that he wants to not make America great again, Eric. He wants to save America, and God bless him. You do get that sense. You do get that sense when you talk to him that he, he feels that the country needs him back in power to clean house, to save, to save America. And, man, I'm telling you, I, 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 you and the three of us have known him a very long time. I really get the sense that he's not thinking about DeSantis or Christie or, or anyone else right now. He's laser-focused on, on the White House, on the general, not the it, primary. And it's not... Look, it's not overconfidence. Uh, Ron DeSantis, I have high regard for what he's done down in Florida. He failed the test. And in some ways, it's not his fault. Because what the 
Republican Party cares about is Trump beating DOJ and beating the swamp. He's the only man who can understand what this fight is all about. And he is rallying this coalition of Republicans, conservatives, MAGA, and just patriotic Americans around him. And I think Joe Biden, he better watch out. It's time to listen to Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, because Donald Trump is getting back in that White House. You know, off, off the side, before he left, we, had, we talked a little bit. I said, you think it's going to be Biden? He's, he's like, I'm not sure the guy's going to be able to even make it. But uh, Matt Slap, Sebastian Gorka, thank you both for being here. Appreciate your time. Okay, folks, coming up, we'll be back with more analysis of our exclusive Donald Trump interview with special guests, Dick Morris, Jeffrey Lord. You won't want to miss it. I'm Jane King, and this is New to the Street. Here we go. I'm Carolyn. I've been in private practice of physician's physical therapy for 35 years. And you're going to come in, but breathe. Breathe. Yep. Perfect. I open up at 4 a.m. and I'll go on till 10 a.m. And it's day after day. And as you can see by the equipment here, we are intensely active. People watch, they observe, and people say, Carolyn, what's your secret? And I say, it's from proper diet, proper exercise, and of course, through balance of nature. I'm 60, but since taking balance of nature, I feel the energy level of 27. I've been taking Balance of Nature for several years and I love it. I endorse it, I believe in it, and I would recommend it. Call 1-800-246-8751 or go to balanceofnature.com to get free shipping. And don't forget to get 35% off your first preferred order by using discount code NEWSMAX. Did you make that call? Honey, we already have Medicare. Why do I need to call? Alan, the Feldman said we may be able to get additional benefits with a Medicare Advantage plan right here in our zip code with zero dollar monthly premiums. Honey, what do you mean additional benefits? We turned 65, we got Medicare. That's all there is to it, right? I'm talking about Medicare Part C, commonly called Medicare Advantage. We have traditional Medicare, which is only Medicare Parts A and B, but not Part C. Wait. So not everyone on Medicare is a Part C plan? No. That's why we need to call, because there may be plans available with additional benefits that aren't covered under Medicare Parts A and B. We don't have a Medicare Part C plan, which covers everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits in Medicare Part C. What kind of extra benefits? There are great plans that may be available with extra benefits, like dental, vision, and hearing. Did you say dental? Yes, dental. Medicare Part C plans could include dental benefits that help cover routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, plus dental x-rays, fillings, gum disease treatment, and dentures. We need that. I'm calling. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans with additional benefits available that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. Call now now for your free 2023 no obligation Medicare benefits review. Call 800-615-7134. 800-615-7134. This is Keratin Debris where nail fungus grows. Nonix Nail Gel cleans out fungus by removing keratin debris. Using Nonix, 90% of nails improve. Get clinically proven results. Lift out the fungus with Nonix. Okay, now let's bring advisor to Donald Trump, host of Dick Morris Democracy and author of The Return, Dick Morris, also here, former advisor to the Reagan White House and contributing editor for the American Spectator, Jeffrey Lord. Dick, I, I assume you, you heard the interview. You know, I asked him about the debate. I said most people that I talk to don't want him to debate, and he said, I, I, I shouldn't and I won't, but I like to debate people. Like, and then I asked him a second, and maybe even he said, I've decided. I've decided about my debate, but I'm going to let you know next week. I, I think that's some interesting news there. What do you think he's going to do? 
Well, I think the important thing is not what he doesn't do, but what he will do. I think he's going to do something on August 23rd that's going to attract a great deal of attention and defeat the debate for ratings. And I think that's what he's planning to do. Well, you want to speculate? Do you do you have do you have some in, inside information? I, 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 you know, I almost did. I, I this is funny. I, they're going to kill me if I say this, but I, I almost said, Mr. President, how about you, me, and Tucker Carlson sit down and watch the debate and talk about it? I, you, it, it, on, it you might be on the right track. I might be on the right track. I think, Tra I go think ahead. That, the, that what went on in this in this interview was very important. He made a strategic pivot. Normally, when you talk about how your opponent is corrupt, it's kind of tisk tisk. Look at all the money he made. He bought a sports car. He bought houses. This is deplorable. But what he's doing is saying that the problems we have in this country are because of China and because of Biden. And he's saying that from COVID to uh, the border to uh, Cuba to the military threats that China represents, this is a president who was bought and paid for, and that the that the scandal that it's not just the scandals, the policies that he's laid out are pro Chinese uh, because he's basically paid for, and he combined the issue of domestic problems and blamed it on China and made that the central issue of the campaign. And I think it was incredibly important. Now, Jeffrey, I don't know if you could pick it up as a little bit of an innuendo. But I mentioned how you talk to people on the street. Some people who don't even like Trump say they want to see him back in office because he'll clean house. He almost didn't let me finish my sentence before he said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. Here's a guy who's going to clean house. I wanted to know, you know where he would start. He didn't really say, but any question that there'll be some heads rolling in D.C. when he becomes president? Oh, none, none. You know, Eric, a few weeks ago, there was a front page New York Times article that talked about how people around uh, Donald Trump were were planning out the things that he would do to uh, rein in the deep state and to clean out uh, the problems we have in, in Washington. And I mean, the, the opposition just went crazy at this thought. I mean, these people are really terrified of him because they know he's a man of his word and he will, in fact, make major changes in Washington and the deep state. And they're terrified of it. That's why they'll do everything they can, along with their media allies, to keep him out. That's what they're about. Dick, you know, you, you, you're one of the other 12 or 13 people who want to run for the GOP nomination. You watch this interview. What's your takeaway? That he's on, that he, we shouldn't go up against him. We couldn't beat him. That was the most masterful performance. And uh, I would get out of his way. What's really going on is that as it becomes clear that DeSantis and Haley and Pence have no chance to win, this really is an audition for vice president. That's what you have to see the debate as. Ramaswamy doesn't think he can be elected president, but he's auditioning for a top job. And I think he's, he's making it. And I think that Tim Scott, the same deal. And I think that, that, they, that as that changes, this debate is not going to be a dump on Trump. It's going to be people trying to come on to him. Let me say one other thing about what Jeffrey was talking about. There is an executive order that he's planning to release that is the same as he did at the VA, where he said that I will have the right to fire any civil servant in the VA because the scandals were so horrible. It's called Schedule F. And he's going to do that over the entire federal government. And it's going to basically eliminate the civil service system and replace it with the system that's responsive to what the people want. Yeah. And, and Jeffrey, I'll let you, you, you follow that because there's a man who's focused, I mean, laser focused on, he's already planning out, mapping out what he's doing when he gets back into the Oval Office when the other candidates, frankly, are trying to figure out how they're going to even get the nomination. Yeah. That, you know, the difference between now and 2016 when he won is he'd never been president before. He'd never had a job in the federal government before. Now, after all of his time here, he knows, as the phrase goes, he knows where the bodies are buried. He knows what the problems are. He knows exactly the kind of people he should not have in his administration, not to mention the kind of people that he should have and what the problems are. That is all to his to the good. And I think that's one of the things that just terrifies his opponents. Absolutely. Ter Dick, oh, 30 seconds, terrified his opponents, also terrified half the people in the deep state. I'm, uh, and I'm thinking Christopher Ray. I'm thinking even Jack Smith yes. and, and the others. Final thought. 
Yeah, well, I think that when we say he's weaponized the DOJ, in fact, what he's done is that he's taken the entire federal government and, uh, and mobilized it against Trump because they all feel so threatened by him. And, the, and ultimately, what Trump is doing now is tying that to the terrible policy screw-ups of this president. All right, we got to leave it right there. Jeffrey Lord, Dick Morris, thank you for being here. Thanks, Eric. Okay, folks, coming up, more Bounce after this. Hey, Joe, how come your Justice Department goes after Trump endlessly, yet they cover for your family? Hunter's laptop? Yeah, that was censored. But we know that laptop's real. And it's not just filled with photos of Hunter's drug-fueled debauchery, either. Nah, it showed Hunter pocketed millions from foreign partners, cash from Ukrainian and Chinese interests accused of bribery and fraud. And remember when you claimed your family never made money from China? Well, Hunter admitted in court he took their cash. His Chinese business partner was tied to the Communist Party. How did Hunter's partners get meetings at the White House? Your brother, grandkids, even nieces and nephews got paid from foreign deals. Your family and their cronies raked in over 17 million from these schemes. And you, Joe, went from being one of the poorest in Congress to a millionaire in the White House. Come on, Joe. All this a coincidence or corruption? Make America Great Again, Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it. And folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get the secret war free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Hey America, what are you waiting for? Don't re-roof, silicone it. Less than half the cost of a new roof. Applied by Polo International, the number one silicone contractor in the USA. 15 and 20 year manufacture warranty. Manufactured by GE, a name you can trust for more than 125 years. Formulated and produced for cold and hot climates. We'll go directly over your existing roof. Call today and find out why Polo International and GE is the smartest, most cost effective way to go. Silicone is designed to protect your roof against leaks and the damaging effects of UV rays. For commercial, industrial, condominiums and HOAs. As prices rise up throughout the country, Polo International is the most economical way to protect your roof. No messy tear-off. One monolithic watertight seal. Time proven and tested. Don't re-roof. Silicone it. With Polo International and GE, we save happy clients millions. Call 1-866-975-2867 or visit our website at polo14.com. Hi, I'm Elmer Heinrich. My company sells Immuno 150. If you haven't heard of it, you need to go to the website on the screen or call the toll-free number. We sell to thousands of consumers and our reorder rate is above 94%. Now many people ask us how we can sell a month's supply of Amino 150 for less than $60 when most of our competition is $80 to $90 a month. It's simple. We don't pay celebrities to hawk Amino 150 and we don't pay testimonial people to say something good about the product. Amino 150 stands on its own with its 70 minerals and 80 other nutrients. It doesn't need any help, and it has more than color, taste, and smell. I am 89 years old, and my wife is 80, both with no arthritis, no allergies, no aches or pains of any kind, nothing, all because of Immuno 150. Now check the number of minerals in the product you take. Don't be surprised if you don't find more than 12. Order Immuno 150 to see what 70 minerals can do for you. Order now. You'll be glad you did. So a little bit of a, a wrap up here, folks. We spent the afternoon at Bedminster, New Jersey at, at Trump's uh, golf club, where, by the way, the Live Golf Tournament will be this weekend. And Trump was, again, very laser focused. He knew exactly what he was going after. He had a lot of things to say. He slammed President Biden 
You know, the first time he's done that that way since his third indictment. He said the Biden is probably not capable um, of being president going forward. He's a compromised president. He said the country's never been weaker than with Joe Biden. He called the deep state something we have to fight strongly against. He says he's learned a lot the first time around. He said he made a decision. Here's the breaking news, folks. This is the one everyone saw. They're hitting me up on, on text already. They want to know. New York Times, CNN, everyone's calling me. He says he's made a decision. He's made a decision on that the big debate on August 23rd, but he will not tell us right now. He's going to wait until next week, but the decision's already in. Um, he also said, interestingly, he refuses. He will not sign the GOP pledge supporting any other candidates if it's not him as the nominee. Um, he doesn't think anyone else can do the job besides him, but he unequivocally said he wouldn't. Others danced around it a little bit. He called Bill Barr a coward, and he called Bill Barr a slob. He didn't hold back with Bill Barr. He's really ticked off. He called Jack Smith deranged and completely political. He's very favorable of Tim Scott. He said Ron DeSantis ruined his shot for not only 2024, but 2028. All right, folks, that's all we have time for. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget, set the DVR. Just set it. Forget it. You'll never miss an episode. Chris Plant, The Right Squad, up next. Have a great night. Never forget, keep the balance. Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years now. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's gonna cover the repair that they wasn't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. My mom told me to call CarShield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, CarShield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with CarShield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered and I saved close to $9,000. I called CarShield and saved over $5,000. Yes, CarShield is a good value. Every plan through CarShield comes with a price lock guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call CarShield now before it's too late. Call 800-348-8396, 800-348-8396, 800-348-8396. You see a lot of gold companies advertising on TV these days. How do you know which one to pick? I'll tell you how I chose. See, I'm not just a spokesman, I'm actually a client. At Patriot Gold, the client works directly with the owners. They have a no-fee-for-life IRA and they're the top rated by Consumer Affairs six years in a row. And most important to me, Patriot Gold is a conservative firm pushing America first values. It's really American patriots helping patriots. And sometimes that makes all the difference in the world. Call the Patriot Gold Group today and add the stability of physical gold and silver to your investment portfolio. 
Call now, 1-800-778-4156. One eight hundred seven seven eight four one five six. President Trump's 2024 presidential campaign is under attack, and we need you to take action today. Democrats in the D.C. swamp will do whatever it takes to stop Donald Trump. This includes the weaponization of the D.